Okay guys, today I'm doing a review of my friend's Benelli BJ300GS. But I'm in Beijing, it's winter, my helmet is kind of new so I apologize if you can't hear me so clearly. Honestly it's a fantastic bike. Um, I would say, maybe with the GW250, this is one of the best bikes for Beijing. It's just comfortable, it's enough power, if you want to go on the expressways, I think this tops out 141, so it's pretty decent. Like expressway speeds is meant to be 120. If you want to overtake a truck, you can. That's pretty awesome. So this bike is actually it's a 300cc. It's a twin cylinder. Pretty good power delivery. It looks, I, as you can see, it looks amazing. It is winter, and before I'm driving it this week, um, nobody drove it for about a month or something, and it's been sitting outside. So as you can see, there's like a fair bit of dust. Um, accumulating on it, the back tires are a little bit worn down, but overall, it's still a very, very nice looking bike. Uh, it's got the red rims, the red piping, the single shock here, and and the twin uh, twin brake brake rotors at the front. So you'd assume that the brake um, the braking is pretty good. Honestly, I find it a bit spongy. To be honest, uh, in Beijing, that's kind of okay as long as it soaks up the bumps and um, it can stop in time I mean that's that's pretty good but you think it'd be a lot racy and it doesn't uh, I don't know maybe there's something wrong with this particular one um, but it doesn't feel that racy when you're actually riding it I will show you as I'm actually riding it but um, the riding position is it's quite upright it feels a little bit like a dirt bike except for the seat is lowered and obviously a lot more comfortable and the pegs the pegs are a little bit further back so in a, in a dirt bike you normally sit very, very upright, and your your legs are in line in that kind of upright feel. And this one, your pegs are, and your feet are a little bit further back. So it's an interesting riding style, and it's a quite um, cramped. I mean, if you're going on long journeys, this this thing, you'd be sore for sure. This particular one is a 2014 model, but bought in 2015. And my friend got this uh, second hand, so he paid... I think 18,800 for it. Oh, that's with it legal and everything. So it comes with a Jingbi, and that allows you to go pretty much all over Beijing, well, but not inside the fourth ring road. And there's other videos about that, but basically, if you get caught inside the fourth ring road, then it's uh, three points off your license, 100 quai fine, something like that. But they actually have to stop you. So um, I drive, I drive inside the fourth ring road, Many friends do that have the Jing B. It's just not worth getting the Jing A license plate. So another friend bought this brand new, and he had the black with the uh, kind of maroon piping. A few years later, they changed the piping. So this one is the red. Uh, so 2014 is the red piping, um, and then you could get it a bit later with just black piping or with like a red, but it's kind of a maroon piping. show you I hope you can see this is the key you think it'd be pretty cool because it's got the little flick switch whatever it is same as on the 600 but it's uh, the plastic is not great it still feels a bit Chinesey so yeah I gotta say Chen Jiang uh, a Chinese brand bought over Benelli in 2012 so Benelli 600 riddled with problems that's the one I had before overheating the now this is 2014 Benelli 300. So much better. Honestly, so, so much better. This one, honestly, it's a good looking bike and it just works. The only thing that I'll say is a little bit bad is um, even though it's made in China, I mean, it's Italian style, but even though it's made in China, um, the parts are still quite expensive. So my friend was telling me that this front fender, this was broken in two places. He had that replaced and that cost 300 quai. Which, I mean, if you're comparing to um, Western bikes and Western prices, 60 Australian dollars, something like that, 50 American dollars, it's not that expensive. But in China, you know, if you're getting a Chinese bike, that would cost 150 kwai. So half the price. Still not so bad. Rear tire, I think he goes for Pirellis, or he will go for a Pirelli, and that's like 1,500 RMB. Servicing the, f the oil, I think, takes 3 litres. So... Where I get a service, it will cost 300 RMB. Where he gets a service, it will cost 450 because I guess he uses a special type of oil or something. The fuel tank, 
it's pretty big but I feel that like, this goes through fuel quite quickly I don't know if that's actually because I've been driving a lot and didn't realize or not but I feel it goes through fuel quite quickly to fill up two days ago it was about a hundred quai to from you know one bar left or two bars left until full is about a hundred quai I think the price of fuel has gone up though so that might make more sense anyway let's see how the bike starts It honestly, it sounds pretty good. So, what I gotta say is that because the exhaust is down here, when you're on the bike, you, you hear the sound a lot more than anybody else. So even when I'm riding it, I don't know, so it's at idle now, it's a 1,500. Uh, when I'm riding it, you're riding around maybe seven, six, seven, it sounds, it honestly sounds really, really good. Um, but I guess for other people outside, they can't hear it so well. So anyway, let's go and take it for a ride. Um, sound, I hope you can still hear me because I'm not wearing my little muffler thingy. Um, sound, honestly, it's really, really good. The sound when you accelerate, it sounds awesome. Um, suspension, you can't really feel it on these kind of roads. Gear change, smooth. I mean, you can adjust your clutch to whatever you feel like. But it, gear change is quite smooth. It pulls away in pretty much any gear. Maybe with the exception of fourth. And you get up to highway speeds like very quickly as well. And what's more, I mean, yeah, it looks good. You'll see as we're riding, but um, the dash, you can't see what gear we're in. It does have a neutral indicator, but you can't see what gear we're in. I think the bike that you can compare this to, if you're looking for a good bike for Beijing and something with a bit more power, so not just the standard Honda CB150 or your Suzuki EN125 or EN150, whatever, that's your standard good quality farmer's bikes. And then you get, you know, Chinese brands. So this would be your like, um, you want a bit more power, you want something a little bit better. Um, I would say Suzuki GW250 or, or this, the Benelli 300. So that's probably the comparison bike and I used to have that bike before. And so comparison wise, I would say that bike is more adapted to China riding. Uh, this, they've gone off in the direction of like, we want it to be more sporty, which is fair enough. I mean, you can hear that from the sound, from the looks, the piping and whatnot. GW250 has way better suspension. Or maybe not better suspension, it depends what you want, but um, it's more suited to China riding. So it will soak up the bumps. Cornering is just, is just all around better. It's a longer wheelbase, so that uh, plays into, into that as well. This one, they've obviously gone for a more like a uh, racy kind of thing. I mean, if you're driving on these, you know, I'll be entering the G6 in a moment and eventually on to the ring road. Ooh. Um, but it handles it fine. If you, because in China you occasionally do a little bit of dirt, just you'll find yourself in some like uh, village area. You will have to do a little bit of dirt. This does not handle it well. Like that one I can guarantee. And if you're a novice rider, I mean, I'm not a novice rider, but some people that would be buying this are you know they are is difficult control off-road because it is a heavy bike this is i think 183 kilograms gw is about the same but it's a 250 but it's a longer bike a bit more sturdy bike i think also i'm driving this bike a little bit uh cautiously today because normally i drive in the uh, emergency express lanes like these cars here are doing or the bus lanes or whatever but i don't want to draw attention to myself because my friend just got this bike up to legal status again and it cost him a fair penny of paying all the fines and one of the big things was he was riding in the express lanes and he got caught for that so many points off, a bit of money I don't want to put the bike in uh, in jeopardy again so I I drive my bikes legally here in Beijing I mean you can drive it illegally I mean obviously you shouldn't but you can you're wanting to get a Jingbei license which is usually 10% of the value of your bike so the fact that this brand new, I think, is the retail price on the website says 24000 but with the plate, 
Uh, it ends up costing about 27 with dealer fees and all that kind of stuff. Brand new, so that's actually not so bad. A GW250, honestly it's about the same price. You're really just going for, do you want Japanese, actual Japanese quality, with a bike that's tuned for China, and it, the GW250 doesn't look as good as this for sure. Or, do you want a Italian design bike, so it looks amazing, sounds more amazing, but quality may or may not be as good as as what you want. So I went for the GW250 before, my friend obviously went for this one. What are these people doing? Is there an accident here or something? There is an accident. Whoa! Back wheel just like slid out there just because of the water. The other thing that you have to note if you're looking for a bike in Beijing is the GW250 gets stolen a lot. This one, I haven't heard of many getting stolen, but um, maybe that's because they keep them inside more. But I'd, I'd honestly say this bike is, you know, for what you can get and, and for price, value for money and all that, is the best bike for Beijing. It's a bit heavy, but as I say, because of the riding position, you don't really feel that. You sit rather low, uh, you're quite upright, the pedals are, the foot pegs are back a little bit. You don't really feel it's as heavy as it actually is. Like if you have to move it and you have to lift up the back end, you're like, oh my God, this is a heavy bike. But um, when you're riding it, you don't really feel it. One thing, I mean, quality control. So yeah, engine, great. Gearbox, great. One thing that annoyed me for the Bellinelli 600 that I had before was the switch gear. All the switch gear was fairly shit. Here, honestly, it's fairly good. I mean, it's all fairly standard shit. High beam, low beam, indicators, engine stop, whatnot. But everything feels solid, which is, which is great. The actual um, instrument cluster, it's nothing amazing. It tells you, you know, it apparently tells you what time it is. That's not true. Apparently tells you the em engine temperature. Benelli, Tianjung, those things are prone to uh, not being correct or just breaking outright. This is meant to be a review of the bike and you're meant to hear like uh, the sound at, at high speed and all that kind of stuff. But in reality, this is just like a video of how shit Beijing traffic can be sometimes. So yeah, normally, normally I would say you need a bike that uh, is nimble. And this is nimble enough. I had as well a Shine Ray 250 that a, a friend now owns. And I mean, that's great. That one you can go up and down curbs, as you sometimes have to do here in Beijing. Longer suspension travel, this, no, you can't do that. I mean, that curb, sure, you can go up, but um, you know, you can't go up the big ones and that's, that's a bit disappointing. But obviously it's not designed to do that. Mirrors, it's still very plasticky. Honestly, that's relatively fine. Ooh, the sound. Oh yeah, the horn is shit. Uh, for me, every time I'm in Beijing and you've got a new bike, you upgrade the horns as soon as possible. I talk about that before. It's basically people are not very specially aware here and they're gonna be doing shit in front of you. So you need to let them know that they're doing things wrong. So you need a bigger horn. So I normally try to put one from a Mian Bao Chou on which is like a minivan, a mini minivan. Um, and that usually works out pretty well. Okay, so that was third gear and uh, low revs and it just didn't have the power. So first, second, no problem. Third, a little bit of a problem. Not, you know, not problem in terms of normal driving, but if you decide I'm gonna take off in that gear, it's, uh, it's, it's not great. And if you change down to second, then you're over revving it. So there's a little bit of a difference in terms of the gears there. How wide is it? It's pretty good. You fit snugly in. Um, if you think you can go through a gap, generally you can. I don't, I don't, you know, even doorways into apartment uh, gates and whatnot, you can get through that quite easily. Even the GW250 or the Shine Ray 250, you had to like wiggle your bike through the mirrors in. Uh, this you don't have to do that, so that's honestly a great bike. So I'm in sixth gear now and I'm going 83. I found that according to the GPS from map, map programs, the speedo is off by like four kilometers an hour, which is fine.
Overtaking is pretty good. The thing I liked about the GW250 was it didn't attract attention to yourself. And if you're going to be driving in Beijing and you're not 100% legal, that's, uh, that's a pretty good thing actually. You know, you want like a good quality farmer's bike and that's the next stage up. This bike, for sure you're drawing attention to yourself. It's like white with red piping. Uh, it sounds like this. Uh, yeah, for sure you're drawing attention to yourself. So if you're not 100% legal, uh, then uh, there's like more chance of you being caught. I was going to show you a little bit later. I'll have to find a, a, a quiet street to do it because this is obviously not the right time. This is the entrance to the third ring road. I'll do an emergency stop. And uh, I mean, everybody in Australia, America, England, and whatnot, you have to do an emergency stop to pass your driver's license. In China, I don't remember if they do that. I've only got a few friends that went through the actual test. I just changed my license. But normally, normally that's not a thing that comes up in uh, driving conversation, you know. But if you're driving in Beijing, because the people in front of you and around you generally drive like shit, or people just, you know, walk out in front of you, or whatever, you will have to do an emergency stop. Uh, so it's important to know how your bike handles, responds. Uh, if you can slide that off the back or not, how nimble it is, if your bike drops into corners, or whatever. Okay, so there's nobody behind me. We can technically do an emergency stop. We're going 40. Okay, the back tire lifts up a little bit, actually. Pretty good braking power, to be quite honest. Feels a little bit unsure. Well, as, as long as you keep it straight, it's okay. Um, it's quite violent, it doesn't slide much. And you can feel the fact that there's more braking power in the front than the back. I would guess that if you need to stop, you will stop. But novice riders riding in Beijing, there's a chance that they will crash it with an emergency brake because it's so sudden and jerky. That would be my guess. The GW250, it honestly handled very well. And it stays upright very well because I think of that longer wheelbase. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that. This one, I've slid out, not like out out, but had the back wheel go uh, sideways a little bit as I had another person in the back because some dick had just like stopped in front of me for zero reason. And um, I gotta say, this bike is quite predictable. Same as GW250, very predictable. So that's exactly what you want when you're driving around in Beijing. The other thing, as I pointed out before, is that the bike has uh, twin, uh, twin front rotors. So the stopping power should be pretty good. What's nice about this bike as well is that um, because the engine's quite loud, the exhaust is quite loud, if the horn is shit, you can always use your uh, your engine to, to rev a bit and let them know that you're coming through. Oh, the other thing is um, my friend before this bike had a Chenjiang 150. So he had the Chinese brand that now owns Benelli and it was a 150 with five gears. I mean, he said that was a fine bike and then he moved to this and he's like, I think that's a good progression. If this is your first bike that you're riding ever uh, and you're riding in Australia, fine. If this is your first bike in China, no. I mean, same if you're in America or England and your first bike there because it's more open and whatnot and people will buy it by the rules and whatnot. Again, fine. First bike here? No, it's not. It's really not a good idea. You want like a light 150cc or something like that because uh, you really have to get used to the whole driving with Chinese characteristics.